Continuing our back to school coverage this morning, classes start tomorrow at the Wisconsin School for the Blind and Visually Impaired. And this year, students are using new technology to make learning a bit easier. Our Eden Checkle is live in Janesville this morning with more on this topic. Good morning, Eden. Hey, Adam and Danica, how's it going? So this is the first year that the Wisconsin School for the Blind and Visually Impaired is implementing a new program. It's called the One to One Eye Device Program, and we're going to get into that in just a few minutes. But first, I want to introduce you guys to Jeremiah Beasley. He is the Assistive Technology Specialist here at the school. Good morning. Thanks for being here. Absolutely. Thanks for coming out. All right. So you guys have some really cool stuff that you're using in classrooms, and you're really the guy who's introduced to this technology before students can get their hands on it. What are you going to show us today and how exactly does this work? Sure, I'm going to show you how we're implementing Google Apps for Education for our students. Uh, we use a technology called a screen reader and in this case I'm going to be using NVDA which stands for non-visual desktop access and uh, we'll show you how to access Google Apps from the keyboard. Awesome, let's do it. All right. And Google Apps is something, as you're doing this, yes. um, Google Apps is something that has become very popular, I mean, with, with vis uh, students who, um, sighted students and visually impaired students absolutely, as well. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. So uh, we think it's important that our students be able to compete with their sighted peers, so we want them being able to use the same technology as their, as their sighted peers in, in schools. Very cool. So I'm going to go to my desktop with a Windows key D, uh -huh. and you're going to hear it talk. My drive, Google Drive, Mozilla Firefox. Uh, it didn't quite do, you know, technology is what it is. <laughs> it uh, is. But anyway, so now I'm in um, Firefox and my Google Drive is up here. And I can navigate this. Um, and it never goes as planned even though you... That's fine. <laughs> Another thing though to mention is that you guys are, can also uh, change the voice. Oh, absolutely. Right. We can change the voice and we can navigate uh, anywhere on this page with, with the keyboard. And, and so, explain some of the things that students can do with Google Apps. What, what we are can create things? a document, we can um, create spreadsheets, we can collaborate. Uh, so if one student's in one area working on a document, uh, a student in another area can be working on that exact same document at the same time, uh, which is very helpful. So I'm going to go... Got about 30 seconds All right. here. So <laughs> I, I really am sorry, guys. That's um, okay. So we're, uh, we're going to go in and create a new document. And so... C, C. And I'm not. And this saves paper. I'm assuming the fact that you're able to share your documents with other students, other teachers. You don't have to necessarily print it. Correct. Okay. Correct. Very cool. Um, yes, and and so students can uh, turn things in that way. They can store things in their Google Drive so that um, that that they can share it with teachers and other classmates as well. Something that I quickly want to touch on is that yes. because of this new technology, do you think students don't have to necessarily um, learn Braille or? Is this replacing Braille, in a sense? I, I would absolutely say not. Okay. Uh, I believe we're in a Braille renaissance right now, and I believe the technology makes Braille more revelant, relevant than ever, uh, and we'll be showing some of that technology as well. But having that Braille available, I can access all of this with a Braille display as well. So uh, Braille, I think, is, is really literacy for blind people, and it's so important. That, that they have that. Very crucial. Thank you so much, Jeremiah. Thank and you. And we're still going to keep you here. All Coming right. up at around 620, we're actually going to go over, um, it's called an iPad with, with a Braille display, and we're going to show you guys how they're able to scan documents with their iPhones and have it read to them. So we'll have all that coming up at around 620, Adam and Danica. All right, Eden, thanks so much. Appreciate it. This continues with Back to School, and technology is providing new tools for learning at a school in the Janesville area. The Wisconsin School for the Blind and Visually Impaired is implementing Implementing a new program this year. It's called the One to One Eye Device Program. News 3 This Morning reporter Eden Checkel is live this morning with an explanation as to what this is and how this is going to help kids. Good morning, Eden. Hi, Adam and Danica. Good morning. Yeah, so as part of the One to One Eye Device Program, each student will be able to take one of these iPads home and this Braille display. Again, joining us is Jeremiah Beasley. He is the Assistive Technology Specialist here at the Wisconsin School for the Blind and Visually Impaired. Good morning again. Good morning. Thanks for being here. Absolutely. All right, so this is pretty interesting stuff. Obviously, when you look at this, it's just an iPad. Correct. But it works differently for students here at the school. Exactly. The nice thing that Apple has done with all their devices is they've included accessibility 
and included is a free screen reader that we can hook with a braille display via Bluetooth, just like your headsets and all that sort of uh -huh. thing. So as I change things, taking folder. so Finance. now it changes these pins Definitely on here, open. and so Actions the student available. can read everything that's going on in the iPad in braille. We can also input into braille as well, and that converts it to print on the screen. Very cool. So obviously earlier we were talking about how you were saying that um, there is a decline in the number of students who can read Braille, right? There's about a 10% 10, 10 of students Correct. are literate? Correct. Uh, that, that's a national statistic. I think we're probably a little better here in Wisconsin, mm -hmm. thanks to a group of really good teachers of the blind visually impaired across the state. But um, one thing that we found, though, is uh, we want to get that number up because we know that uh, blind, visually impaired people have a 74% unemployment rate, wow. but 90% of the people employed know Braille. So we wow. know it really is a pathway to being successful uh, as an adult. Absolutely. Knowing Braille will also help them be able to use these devices as well. Exactly. I don't know what exactly. I just said. <laughs> All right. And then this is probably what I find to be most fascinating. This is just a regular iPhone. Correct. But what is this app that you have here? So I have an app called KNFB Reader. It was a partnership be between Ray Kurzweil and the National Federation of the Blind. Uh -huh. And what this allows me to do is I can take a picture. Take picture. Button. Take picture. There you go. And Constitution of the States. And it's Read reading to you. Correct. And if I had a Braille display hooked up to this, let me pause justice. that. If I had a Braille display hooked up to this, I could also read it in Braille. Very I cool. can also save this and export it and, and uh, be able to have more access to printed materials. So again, students can scan this and then have the Constitution read to them. Exactly. Absolutely. Cool. Thank you so much, Jeremiah. Absolutely. Again, I mean, some cool things that they're using here. The iPad, the iPhone, the smartphone, or the smart board, I should say. Um, we're going to have more details on our website at channel3000.com. Back to you, Adam and Danica. Amazing. It's fascinating. Eden Checkle reporting live this morning for us from Janesville. Thanks so much. We appreciate it.